my name is Bill Nagel, and I'm a principal engineer in Amazon's consumer pricing organization. And today I'm going to talk about software evolvability. But first, I want to talk a little bit about customer obsession. When your primary motivator is delivering what's best for your customers, then you will tend to prioritize the things that are most immediately valuable to your customers first. And you'll want to deliver that value as quickly as possible. So what does that have to do with software evolvability? Well, when I talk about evolvability, I'm talking about how easy it is to change existing software, to adapt to changing customer needs, and to add new features. Evolvable systems are easy to adapt, and therefore they facilitate fast and frequent delivery of new customer value. However, this agility doesn't come for free. When software engineers are starting out on a new system, it's a blank slate. Once the basic system is up and running, it's easy to start delivering customer value because the system is still small and there isn't a lot of legacy functionality to consider. Over time though, that can change and that is where thinking about software evolvability becomes important. At any given point in time, the fastest path to delivering customer value is to focus on the minimum changes necessary to get something working. For example, let's take testing. When you write some code, it's often easier to just manually test it once to see if it works. Writing an automated test takes time, and that risks slowing down delivery. However, a manual test is a one-time thing. It can only be repeated by manually testing again. So you can make this trade-off, and sometimes it's the right choice, but when the fastest, cheapest path to delivering is taken repeatedly, then you end up slowing down your ability to make changes over time. A short hack will always be cheaper than doing the right thing, but those short hacks become less and less short over time. For instance, let's take the example of automated testing. After you've delivered a number of features, let's say a couple dozen, then properly testing them all for regressions overwhelms the amount of time that it takes to add new features. And so it becomes impossible for developers to do thorough testing. Instead, they avoid making changes to existing logic, which leads to increased complexity, creating a negative feedback loop that slows you down even more. In Amazon consumer software, we noticed that this pattern was cropping up. Not everywhere, but often enough that we wanted to find a way to do better. The question though was how? There are lots of industry best practices that contribute to more evolvable systems, but just encouraging people to apply a grab bag of best practices wasn't good enough. We wanted to tackle the things specifically contributing to lower evolvability in the systems with the biggest challenges. So we needed to get more data. We identified a small number of systems that we knew based on hands-on experience were challenging to evolve and did a deep dive into those systems. We also looked at some highly evolvable systems to see what worked for them. And finally, we did a broad survey of the developer community to gather data from a wider variety of sources so that we didn't over-bias ourselves based on just those systems that we were directly familiar with. Based on the results of this investigation, we came up with a set of six best practices, which we've dubbed the pillars of evolvability. Now, these aren't the only ways to build evolvable software but they are the things that our data was telling us were most important to Amazon consumer systems. Try to structure your systems to have a single place where a given concept is configured. This makes the system behavior easier to understand, reason about, and it helps to ensure consistency. If the same thing is configured in two places, then they can disagree unexpectedly. You should also structure your configurations with keys that naturally describe the configuration. When broad configuration keys are overloaded with different meanings, it can make it hard to adapt when those meanings change. Structure ownership of the code in your system to reflect your organizational structure and vice versa. When different independent teams are writing code in a single overlapping code base, it creates a need for coordination across teams that slows down everyone's development efforts. It's also important to try to avoid transient ownership or what we often call away teams. 
These are teams that don't directly own the code they are working on, but rather are changing another team's code base to address a specific business objective. While these away teams can be very effective at moving quickly to deliver cross-cutting initiatives, systems that require them frequently tend to be less evolvable. One way to address both of these ownership challenges is through federated system architectures that allow individual areas of business logic to be owned independently. This allows each team to own the logic most important to their business area while still being able to deliver functionality that interoperates. Comprehensive automated tests allow you to evolve a system with confidence because the tests can be run frequently in order to validate that changes are not introducing behavioral changes that regress pre-existing functionality. However, if systems aren't designed up front to be testable, it can be very difficult to introduce automated testing later in the system's life cycle. One of the important things enabled by automated testing is refactoring. When you have good tests, you can make changes to existing code with confidence, which allows you to evolve the code structure to better reflect your evolving needs and to reduce unnecessary duplication and the complexity that comes with it. Refactoring to remove complexity allows you continually to make small changes that maintain evolvability without allowing things to get to the point where you need to tear everything down and start again. It also allows you to avoid the trap of speculatively adding a lot of upfront abstraction and generic configurability in the hopes that it will make the system easier to evolve later when it's not needed now which often has the opposite impact on evolvability. When teams identify repetitive actions that are necessary to deliver software in their systems, it pays to invest in ways to automate that effort. This reduces overhead and helps to enforce consistency, which reduces complexity and helps keep systems evolvable. For example, consider a federated architecture where each team owns their own AWS Lambda instance that encapsulates their logic. Creating this Lambda manually is an overhead for each team and involves lots of different choices that can lead to dissimilarities that increase complexity in the system. However, if the team that owns the core architecture vends a common infrastructure setup tool through something like AWS CDK, then they can remove that overhead and make their overall architecture more evolvable. Now, if you've been following along at home, you've likely said to yourself that none of these ideas are rocket science. The key to success is in applying them incrementally and knowingly with an eye towards deliberately investing in evolvability alongside delivering immediate customer value. When teams do this, over time, they are able to deliver customer value more frequently. This is because of what I like to call the tidying effect. At home, you can save time on dinner if you just stack up the dirty dishes instead of washing them. Eventually, though, you're going to need to buy new dishes because the old ones just keep piling up. And at some point, you'll have so many dirty dishes that you can't use your house at all. At this point, it might be easier to just tear down the house and build a new one. Of course, no one's actually going to do this in their home, but this is what happens in a software system when we overemphasize short-term delivery at the expense of long-term evolvability. We add functionality in the most immediate, expedient ways possible without tidying things up until the system is so unevolvable that it becomes untenable to keep adding new features and building a brand new system becomes a more viable approach. So I wanna thank you for taking the time to listen to me today. And I hope that as you start to consider these pillars of evolvability in your own software designs and implementations, that you're able to put yourself on a path towards more software evolvability and the long-term customer value that comes with it. If you're interested in checking out our open roles, feel free to check out our career page at the URL on the screen. Thank you.